the gangs of violent thugs that they are, like to draw lines on maps. And then they call these arbitrary lines drawn on maps borders. And these borders are nothing more than fantasy creations by those in power in order to control those who are not in power. And the sad thing is that we end up creating for ourselves a certain sense of identity based on those borders. What does it mean to be an American? Well, that you were born within the arbitrary line drawn on a map by the United States federal government? Or that you chose to be a part of this country identified by this arbitrary geographical area? And these lines drawn on maps, they don't represent any significant reality that would say people on one side of the line are good, people on the other side are bad. Or that people on this side of the line have special rights and people on the other side don't. But that's kind of how we implicitly respect these borders, which are really nothing more than excuses for control of the freedom of movement. You don't really need permission to exercise that one, to move your body from one location to another, unless you happen to be crossing over one of these arbitrary government lines. And it's really absurd to think that that's all it is. Lines on a map that give the government, ex governments of the world the excuse to control we the tax cows, we the wage slaves, to keep us on the plantation, to keep us on the farm. And it might be that, yes, you can leave, you can expatriate, you can get a passport in another country, you can get different citizenship. And the illusion of being able to leave your country might make the rest of the tax cows more profitable. And if you let one in a thousand leave, but the other 999 are that much more productive for the super class and the exploiters in government as a result, then ah, you can let one cow go. But the effect is much worse than that. That freedom of movement is restricted. That economic freedom is limited. Borders are fundamentally anti-freedom concepts and a real perversion of our desire, our innate human desire for a certain amount of collectivism, safety in numbers, being a part of the herd, not standing out, going along to get along. Yes, not the most beautiful aspects of human nature, but they are nonetheless. And governments take that desire and pervert it into this nationalism, this arbitrary sense of who you are based on what government lines on a map you were born inside of. And this is directly contradictory to freedom, which is so essential and so tied to the concept of property rights. Now, I don't have a problem with there being edges of your property as lines on a map, but when you say this is a border of a country, and anybody born in here has special rights, and anybody born outside doesn't. Well, you're creating a sort of collective property at best, and at worst, creating an excuse for a violent gang of thugs calling themselves government to keep people in and to keep people out. And to one way or another control the free flow of goods and services so essential to the free market and human prosperity. And that's why borders are just another government scam. But if we question that, if we realize that, well, what would be left of government without borders? What identity would government have? What would be the point of being a gang of violent thugs with a socially granted monopoly on initiating force if you didn't have an arbitrary geographical area in which to impose your will on others? And of course, the excuse through the democratic system here is made possible by that artificial nationalist identity that has nothing to do with virtue, nothing to do with rational decision making or association. No, it is an arbitrary decision based on government, the accidents of history, and our innate desire to be a part of a collective, even if it's a dangerous, violent one that uses borders simply as an excuse to justify the existence of that violent gang of thugs and 
help promote a national identity that is contrary to the ideals of freedom.